Bobby Broyles and Tim McDonald here. Should be a really interesting matchup. Buckle up. If you're not watching, you got some problems. Hope your weekend was a great one. Back to business with CA Football's 12 Teams in 12 Days. Presented by Geico, I'm Bobby Broyles, joined by Tim McDonald. New Hampshire Spotlights today's segment. And Tim, every year it seems the Wildcats find a way to battle when their backs are against the wall. Mm -hmm. UNH did that again last year, extending the longest playoff streak in FCS football. Yeah, I mean, it's a kind of yearly trend. We talk yep. about the streak to start with New Hampshire. But I mean, it's something that you have to talk about because... Oh, yeah. Look at New Hampshire last year, a different different year, but the same playoff streak stays alive. Mm -hmm. Three and four after that loss to Delaware. Uh, you're thinking, okay, well, the streak's bound to end at some point. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire wins four straight games, a banged up quarterback position. Sean Golders got hurt down the stretch. They had a lot of players step up, reach the playoffs, have a home playoff game versus Colgate. Mm -hmm. Of course, a sour taste in the Wildcats' mouth. They lost that game to Colgate, and they already beat Colgate in the regular season, so it was a very harsh ending. The second straight year where New Hampshire's season comes to an end at their old new stadium, I should yeah. say. Now in 2016, going to move into the new Wildcat Stadium, which mm -hmm. I know we've been seeing it on social media. We've been seeing a lot of stadium updates. I know a yeah. lot of New Hampshire fans, a lot of New Hampshire players are excited. And it's kind of funny because you talk with some of the players, and I haven't seen the new stadium. I, I don't even know what the new press box looks like. All these <laughs> things. There's a video board. They're going to have replay in New Hampshire. So this is going to be a whole new experience, not only for the fans, not only for the players, but for the state of New Hampshire as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a great thing to have in the program. You know, you think about New Hampshire, you think about at least... One guy on offense every year who comes back who's going to be the stud. Mm -hmm. You think about a, a quarterback position that they might have two guys, but it's someone yeah. that we know. Yep. This year it's a little different. You know, Sean Goldrich is gone, as we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Battled through injuries last year. We saw Adam Reese, the lefty play. When's the last time New Hampshire had a lefty quarterback? Yeah. Who knows that one? <laughs> Trevor Knight is also a kid who's going to contend for the starting quarterback position. But again, think about the pieces that UNH has. You have Dalton Crossan, who's back. 885 yards, 13 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. He also had three touchdowns receiving. A running back who had 46 catches on the mm -hmm. season. So that goes to show you how much faith they have in Dalton Cross yes, as the do. offensive weapon. There's a lot of new faces on this offense. A lot of young guys we don't really know the starting receivers. There's a lot mm -hmm. of guys who we just aren't accustomed to seeing a New Hampshire offense like this. Adam Reese and Trevor Knight, it's basically a two-man race for the starting QB position. As New Hampshire moves forward on offense every single year, they, they find success through whoever is that signal caller. So it's going to be between those two guys, we think, heading into 2016. Head coach Sean McDonald talked to us at Media Day about the competition under center. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, quarterback competition. Went through the spring. Adam's got a slight lead, you know, but uh, it's very close. It's very similar to Goldrich and uh, Valis, the two guys we've had here the last couple of years. You know, um, both kids bring something a little bit different to the table. Reese is a tremendous is a, is a, is a, is a, is a tremendous leader. Uh, has good throwing ability. Has been in the been in the games. Did a nice job for us last year. Really understands everything and plays well. And is very athletic. And Trevor Trevor Knight is a very good athlete. You know, uh, very electric with the ball in his hands. Not many people have gotten to see him. But again, like I said, we, we've gotten to see him in practice and in scrimmage situations. He's a kid that I think has that explosiveness that an Andy Vallis had. You know, and. It's going to be great because we have two kids competing, and that's the most important thing, I think. It's got two kids that are competing for a starting position. As for the defense, the Wildcats have a relatively young group returning, highlighted by just four starters back, but you can bet, Tim, a lot of those guys will be looking to All-American Casey DeAndrade for leadership. Yeah, you think of Casey DeAndrade, and I think of a guy who the last two years has really proven himself to be one of the best defenders in state football. A shutdown guy, a guy who was named to the stats preseason defensive player of the year watch list, a guy who the coaches trust, a guy who also returns punts, mm -hmm. guards the other team's best receivers. Again, he's the captain of this defense. Uh, much like the offense, New Hampshire's defense is going to have a lot of younger guys who we might look at and say, who is that guy? But by the end of the season, we might find out just who they are. Mm -hmm. A lot of redshirt people, a, a lot of players who really haven't played yet, but I know talking to the coaches in the, in the preseason, a lot of guys who they're going to have to trust and play right away. Yep. Look at this. Uh, you know, Think about New Hampshire's rush defense last year. Absolutely finished last in the CA, which is a rarity for New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. 199 yards per game, gave up 27 total touchdowns. Think back to those five losses last year versus San Jose State. Again, FBS game, 285 yeah. rushing yards. William & Mary, 324 rushing yards allowed. Delaware, 284. Up and down the list, the Stony Brook game, 228 rushing yards. Not to say that that's a, a huge thing that's going to haunt this team moving forward into 2016, mm -hmm. but when you think of New Hampshire defense, you think of a bend not break, you think yep. of a team that a defense that at times wanted to flip the switch and could play like a good defense. Think mm -hmm. of that Richmond game last year, a defense that played very well and got the job done. Yep. 
New Hampshire defensively is going to rely on a lot of people, but it all starts with KCD Android. How can it not start? Like I said, the guy who's going to guard the best receiver, who's going to force a lot of defensive schemes around him. Mm -hmm. I think Coach McDonald in that staff at New Hampshire, you have to look at Casey DeAndre, guys like Ryan Farrell, a linebacker who's coming back. You have to look to them and say, lead these younger guys who haven't played as much as you. Once again, Coach McDonald spoke to us this time about the defense. Well, I think the most important thing <laughs> is to understand that some of the young kids in the program are going to have some growing pains. But with a kid like Casey DeAndre, who's been through now four years of starting for us and, you know, has, has such a calming influence on everybody, I think it'll be a great. We've got um, three linebackers back that I look at right now that are senior linebackers, you know, McNally, Shillette, and Farrell. I think they're very good. And I think Shorey up front as a defensive end is going to be another key to our, key to our defense, be senior leadership and bringing the young guys along. Got talent, just got to find out how they can play. We know it seems like the same story year in and year out, but it always comes back to that postseason streak with the Wildcats. Now looking to make it 13 straight years in the playoffs, New Hampshire's 2016 schedule begins with another FBS foe on the West Coast yep. in San Diego State. Last year they played San Jose State, this year it's San Diego State. Arguably one of the better FBS teams that any CA team is going to have to play this season. A lot of analysts, CBS, Sports Illustrated, a lot of those teams have... San Diego State ranked in the top 30. Mm. I think in New Hampshire, you think of a team that really does go out of its way to schedule FBS opponents. Yeah. 11 of the last 12 years, UNH has played an FBS team. Talk about that FBS game, a very tough opponent, like we said. But let's get, let's get past that one. Open up at the stadium the next week versus Holy Cross. Obviously, mm -hmm. an important game, not only to get back on your feet, but an important game, like I said, for the state, for these fans. Really a long time coming for that New Hampshire program to have a new stadium. Yep. The next week you travel to Dartmouth, which is an Ivy League team, a yep. rival team, the only two teams in the state of New Hampshire, so you know there's going to be a lot of bad blood in that game as well. I think you just look to the new stadium, the benefits of that. I think coming back, you miss Richmond, you miss yep. Delaware, you miss playing Villanova. But again, that new stadium, it's going to yep. be nice. You break it in versus you play James Madison, mm. William and & Mary, and Stony Brook all at home. It does set up nicely five home games in all. I think it does help the Wildcats. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's a very, very tough FBS game. Coming out of that one healthy, hopefully. Then you have Holy Cross and Dartmouth before you really get into the conference play. I think it's going to take some getting used to for the fans. It's going to take some getting used to for us watching a game at the yep. new Wildcat Stadium, seeing all that happen. If the Wildcats want to progress this season, I think it's going to be a slow progression on offense, and that defense is going to come along right with it. The opener for the Wildcats at San Diego State takes place on Saturday night, September the 3rd at 8.30. And if you haven't heard us talk about it yet, our player interviews from Media Day, <laughs> you can watch those now on CAFootball.com and our social media platforms. You can watch Casey DeAndre and Dalton Cross, and they spoke to us at Media Day. Watch those now. Like I said, all of our social media platforms have them, and CAFootball.com has it as well. 12 teams in 12-day series presented by GEICO marches on tomorrow with the Rhode Island Rams. Thanks for starting the week with us.